Welcome everyone. So now topic is birth asphyxia. As the word indicates, birth asphyxia means strangulation or decrease oxygen supply uh, to the body at the time of birth. It is also known as perinatal asphyxia and uh, the def definition for this condition is lack of oxygen or hypoxia because of failure of initiation of the breath. Hypoxia means arterial oxygen is less than normal. Less supply of oxygen can trigger this condition that is known as birth as asphyxia. Now the causes of this condition are maternal cause, fetal cause and placental causes. Maternal causes include uh, hypertension into the mother uh, like eclampsia and preeclampsia, pelvic abnormality, diabetes, mellitus, nephritis, hypotension, infection, uterine tetany, maternal hypoxia because of cardiac and pulmonary disease so these are causes of birth as are because of maternal dysfunction placental causes are abruption placental abruption means premature separation of the placenta and placental insufficiency and toxemia post maturity now the fetal causes includes code prolapse occurs abnormal lie presentation of the baby abnormal position of the baby and pre post maturity anemia of the baby if a baby is anemic then decrease rbc decrease rbc will lead to decrease o2 supply and then asphyxia can occur so that is the pathophysiology behind anemia and birth asphyxia infections to the baby cerebral abnormality or hypoxia due to pulmonary or cardiac problems so these are the fetal causes of asphyxia now the pathophysiology behind this condition is asphyxia occurs and then asphyxia is followed by metabolic acidosis because in aerobic respiration occurs and that will accumulate lactic acid that lactic acid will create acidic condition and metabolic acidosis hypoglycemia occurs hypotension and then altered cerebral blood flow occurs which results into uh, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and uh, that is end stage of the birth asphyxia in cns fluid is leaked from intracapillary permeability and cerebral edema occurs which will lead to cell death and hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy can develop now the uh, this was the pathophysiology in which lactic acid was accumulated and hypoxia occurs. Now, how will we diagnose this condition? For diagnosis, we will have to rule out uh, uh, certain causative factors before delivery and then uh, after delivery, then we will have to look after look for the certain factors. Uh, now look uh, we will also perform the EBGAR score for the baby now EBGAR score is a score in which we assess the appearance of a baby pulse rate grimax activity and respiration so EBGAR score if it is low it may present a non aspirated infant and depression of the maternal anesthesia so EBGAR score will rule out the birth aspirator but we can diagnose by EBGAR score so in this way we can diagnose the birth asphyxia. Now the complications will be CNS complications like hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy in kidney acute tubular necrosis can develop respiratory distress syndrome and meconium uh, aspiration syndrome can be developed because of birth asphyxia. Now the uh, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is a condition in which neonatal encephalopathy occurs because of hypoxia in which acidosis occurs and three grades are there. Uh, in hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy so in this way this condition presents hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy now the treatment will be give general support to Meyer give nursery nurse uh, the baby and the thermoregulation should be the, uh, their vital uh, sign should be recorded ng tube should be passed avoid hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia by regular glucose monitoring Meyer blood gases treat hypoxia treat acidosis maintain fluid and electrolyte balance with review infection risk and treat appropriate antibiotic now the specific management of the complication will be central nervous system uh, should be uh, assessed in order to treat seizures give phenobarbital to the baby it is a drug of choice for seizures especially in the baby if there are cardiovascular complications then treat the baby with inotropics like dopamine if renal complications are developed then treat the baby with diuretics and if there are pulmonary complications, then 
for uh, ventilatory support and oxygen should be given in gastrointestinal complications if baby has developed necrotizing enterocolitis then antibiotics should be avoid uh, antibiotics uh, should be given and by avoiding enteral feeding because necrotizing enterocolitis has developed correct hypoglycemia in the baby so in this way we can treat the birth as and we can save the life of baby